the table. Um, I was going to send my wife, the, the parts lady, like always, to go get another board, but I had this one that I was going to make some Santas out of. I decided not to do it, just ran out of time because of everything that was going on. So, what I can do is, I wanted a 1x3s for this table for the balcony for my daughter, but I think I'm going to go with two and a quarter since I'm going to rip them down myself. Uh, that'll be perfect. I'm just going to need them. So I need two for the ends that are going to be... Well, i got to figure that out because I was just about to cut it wrong. Because I was thinking 24 inches, but 24 inches is total. Um, so I'll need two at 19 and a half because I only have a 10 inch uh, miter saw and not a sliding one or anything like that. So I can't cut this big uh, one by 10. Uh, on this little saw, it's exactly one inch to the blade. So I just measured... Well, I measured 24. Four inches and then I met well I measured 25 inches made a mark and that's where I clamped that down so I can use it as a straight edge and just glide through but I'm gonna have to go back and reconfigure because uh, that's the overall length not how long I need the two side pieces uh, so the the center sections are gonna be 19 and a half so I'm gonna go I'm gonna remeasure that at 19 and a half cut me two of those off and then I'll go and figure out the total length and do the same thing for that So I did do on exactly what I didn't want to do on my first cut. I measured it to 19 and a half, set my thing, cut it. So it came out at 18 and a half, right? <laughs> Luckily, I can still use that one because I refigured it like I said I was going to. And um, the sides are going to be 14 and 3 quarters. So I'll just use that one for the two side pieces and I'm still okay. And then these I need to measure at 20 and a half and then cut. As I say, double check, triple check, right? Okay, good to go. Okay, now I gotta get the table saw out and start ripping those down to two and a quarter. Okay, I got my six uh, slats and my two uh, ends. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them at the 18 and a half where I messed up. Um, that way when I get my spacers and everything, you know, cause I'll, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a quarter inch or a half inch, you know, just to see how it looks. And then that way I can chop these off at the end and they'll be the right size anyway. So it's probably a, a good thing. Maybe I planned it that way. Yeah, that way, that was what wasn't a mess up. I planned it that way so they'd be extra long. So I've got it upside down. I found these little cable clips that are exactly a quarter of an inch. So they make perfect spacers for here. And all my measurements came out like I wanted to. It was supposed to be 14 and 3 quarters. Um, and that's what it ended up being. So I will cut these off um, because I like that spacing. I'm not going to increase it to a whole half an inch. That'd be way too much. And then um, on each board I had one piece left over that was just a little bit. Because I could have got four out of each um, one by 10, uh, but I just did three and three, and then I had these two that are just a little bit more than uh, than two and a half or two and a quarter. So I just cut these down at some angles, and they're gonna be for my bottom. Uh, this is the bottom here, and I'm gonna use this to attach. That way I don't have to make any pocket holes or anything like that. I'll just glue it and screw it down, and that'll be the bottom. So got a little uh, carried away, forgot to be recording, but that's okay, because all I did was clamp it down and glue it. So that's how I ended up making the bottom right there. Um, I just used some of those uh, tricks that you see on people's videos. Um, I clamped a clamp here and you know used a, a wedge to kind of wedge it together since I don't have any long clamps. Um, did make a mistake right here if you saw the fill holes, right? Um, I still had some two inch uh, nails in my air gun and uh, they went all the way through and into this board so it took me a minute to get it off of there. I was like, at first I thought glue had seeped through and stuck because I didn't put wax paper, wax paper down. Um, but I kind of figured I'd be safe since I wasn't really... Anyway, uh, 
it wasn't it was two inch nails so i just clipped those off and filled them um hopefully it'll sand down pretty smooth and it'll be all right it's gonna go on the patio anyway all right so the next thing is i'm going to uh bend me uh some brackets to hang it by and this will be the first time that i've used this thing so i haven't have never used it before but i think i've watched enough videos and read the instructions uh, that's the long pin there so there's several ways to set this up to do a 90 degree it worked fine the one way i thought if i did it this way i might be able to get two bins um but I can't figure out how to get the second bend because it, it hits the hits the stop block. So I reconfigured it a couple times. Uh, I don't know. So while I go work on these, she's going to sand this down and stain it. And then we're going to put a... Uh, stain it with this uh, golden oak. And then we'll put a coat of this on tonight. Hopefully uh, it'll dry enough to do that. And um, she's gonna have it that while I go and uh, figure out how to make those brackets. And then we'll put a coat of this on tonight. Hopefully uh, it'll dry enough to do that. And um, she's gonna have it that while I go and uh, figure out how to make those brackets. So I got tired of messing with the bender, just went back to the old fashioned way. I found a little piece of uh, 3 8 plate to extend my vise out. And a big hammer. There we go. Two hooks. Okay, well, just about done here. I almost forgot and I've been cruising along because, like I said, I'm in a hurry and had to had to finish it tonight again. So, just putting in the last screws. I think for now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave this piece off and see how it works. If it has to, what I said we could do is just drill a hole in here and put a little block of wood or whatever you need to keep it from uh, hitting the back. Um, I would like to come in and weld a piece on here, so we'll see. If I had another day, I probably would do that. But it looks pretty nice this way, and I believe it will work just fine as long as at least one of these hits a rail. So I should just have to slide it over to where at least one rests on a rail, and, uh, and that'll keep it from swinging back and forth. So no real need to have this piece here other than you could put it anywhere on your balcony and not have to worry about it. And I'm using a screwdriver in this corner because as always, you can't quite reach with a drill back in these areas. I guess if you had a long extension for your uh, impact driver, it would work. And then there is your rack.
right there. Hook these on your rails. And then, like I said, as long as one of these rests against a rail, you'll be fine. And the other reason I was saying is I'm, I think I'm going to wait is because if, if she needs it to come, you know, maybe if this is thick and you got a thin rail, it's going to lean a little forward. So you're going to need to pull it up some. So we'll just wait and see, but for now, I think that's what we're going to do uh, for hers, is just leave it like this, put a coat of that uh, clear stuff on the top, and call it good.